Hey, this is Steph Ahmet. Welcome to my exorcism.io series. In this video, I'll be working through the gigasecond exercise from the Ruby track. So what this exercise wants us to do is to calculate the moment when someone has lived for 10 to the nine seconds. Uh, a gigasecond is 10 to the nine, which is one billion seconds. All right, let's go ahead and just dive right in. I'm gonna go into the gigasecond directory and create a new TMUX session. And I'll go ahead and open up the test file and open up my testing pane below. And let me just take a look, quick look at this. Um, all right, so I'm, I've got a time object. I've got a gigasecond class, which I'll define in the in the file gigasecond.rb, with a class level method called from that will take a time object. Um, and so, okay, so what it's doing is I'm giving it a time object. This, I guess, represents a birth date and birth date and time. And over here, it's returning that time plus a gigasecond. Or, oh, sorry, it's not returning it. It's expecting it. Expecting it to be returned from from. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And of course, it's going to fail because um, I haven't created that gigasecond.rb file. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll reverse these these two here. Uh, it's gonna, Now it's going to fail because there's no constant gigasecond. Now it would fail, of course, because there's no, um, no from method at the class level. So let's go ahead and create that. Now it'll fail uh, due to the arity because if you remember, this takes one argument time and we're giving it zero or we're, uh, it should take that, but right now it takes zero. So let's call this uh, birth, or I'll just call it time, from time, from time. And now it's gonna fail because we're returning nil and it expects uh, an actual time there. And so if you've watched me do this before, or if you've uh, taken my refactoring course, then you know that I'm gonna hard code this. Um, plus, let me just go ahead and do that. Time TC 2043111114640. And this is going to be enough. Wait a second. I did it wrong. Fat fingered it. All right. That's going to be enough to make this, this test path pass. And, you know, again, why do I do this? Uh, maybe you haven't seen any, any other of my videos and you're looking at this and going, why are, this is cheating. Why are you cheating? Well, I'm not cheating. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of cheating, but the reason I do it is intentional. One is I, I want to make sure that my tests are actually driving the behavior, um, from my class that, uh, and for two reasons, one, I, I want to make sure that my tests are right and they're actually testing what I think they're testing. But also, I, I don't want to write more code than I need to. I don't want to overcomplicate my solution. Uh, if my test is really testing the only case that exists, then uh, this hard-coded answer is probably good for now. Um, you want your solution to be as simple as possible. You don't want to overcomplicate your code. And there, there's another principle at play here in that uh, you want to delay decisions as long as possible in your application until you have the most amount of information. Uh, I think it was Kent Beck who said you'll uh, never know less about your application than you do right now. Uh, so, so we want to be, we want to, we want to uh, optimize for learning, right? And so we want to leave leave decisions for as long as we can. Well, in this case. Uh, this decision is going to get made for us pretty quickly because I'm guessing as soon as I uncomment the skip for the next test or comment out the skip for the next test that we're, I'm going to be forced to actually implement this thing. But I want to make my tests 
drive that behavior. And sure enough, I was right. It failed because the hard-coded result does not actually, um, doesn't match the expectation. So what we have to do here is I've got to actually implement it. So if you remember what I need to do is I need to somehow add a billion seconds to this time to get a new time. So I'm not really sure what to do here uh, when I first see this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at time and see, first of all, what does UT UTC give me? And whatever it gives me, is there a way for me to add something to it? Maybe seconds, maybe a new time, and let's just go from there. Uh, so let me look at UTC and see what it actually gives me. Oh, it creates a time object, cool. So I have a time object. So what I want to know is, can I can I um, add something to this to get a new time? And yep, this is what I would. This is what I'm coming looking for. I'm looking for a plus here. Let's take a look at this. Time plus numeric equals a new time. Addition adds some number of seconds, possibly fractional to time, and returns that value as a new time object. Well, this is exactly what we need. We have a given number of seconds, and we want a new time object that matches that time, right? This time plus certain number of seconds. We have a gigasecond. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I have from time here, and I want to add 10 to the ninth seconds. And I think this will pass. Okay, I'll probably, I'll, I'll do a quick, a little bit of a refactoring on this in a, in a bit, but first I just want to run through these and I think they're all going to pass. That's it. So all of our tests are passing. We have the functionality we need to uh, to uh, to implement this, and uh, we could call it a day right here. But there's one thing I want to do before before we do that. This ten to the ninth right here, sitting here in the code, it's what we call a magic number, uh, because it's just in line in the code, and I don't know what it means. Um, wh why is it 10 to the ninth? Well, right now I know it's I know it's a gigasecond because I just looked at the documentation from exorcism.io. So I know that 10 to the ninth is a billion and that's that's a gigasecond and that's the point of this exercise. But when I come back in six months or somebody else comes in here, it's not immediately apparent what this number represents. So we don't want to have bare numbers like this in line in our code. We want to name them. And usually for something like this, I, I'm going to stick it in a constant. So I, I want to name it so that it's clear, so that my code reads uh, like it, it's it, when you read it out loud, it explains itself. So let's call this a gigasecond. Let me add this here. 10 to the ninth. Make sure we're still green. Yes. So now if I read this. Uh, this class level method from, I give it a from time and it returns the from time plus gigasecond. I mean, doesn't that when I read that out loud, even if you don't know Ruby, even if you don't understand programming, that is re that's clear. It's readily apparent that this is doing exactly what we want it to do from time plus gigasecond. Cool. So let me go ahead and, and submit that. Yeah, if I can spell, if I can type. Cool. So um, this is done, and I'm going to go grab the next exercise.